Cobra Kai never dies. What's going on guys, I'm Chris, and welcome back to another video, a Cobra Kai video, and damn does it feel good to say that ever since the reaction series ended. Since I finally watched the show for the first time, which by the way, check out my reaction series if you have not, I'm ranking all of the Cobra Kai characters from main characters to characters who show up in just one episode. Now I'm sure I probably missed out on a few, but I have about 45 or so characters that I think are worth talking about. If I left them off the list, they're probably not worth mentioning, and I'm sure I probably forgot one that should have been on here, but hey, let me know who you think I should have included in the comments down below. But before I get into this tier list ranking, be sure to hit that like button, comment down below your favorite characters from Cobra Kai, and feel free to comment along with me as the video goes on where you would put certain characters in what tier. And be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to have a few more Cobra Kai videos coming, and of course, I'll be covering season six down the stretch. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this tier list ranking. All right, so the tiers I have are the best of the best, great, good, meh, and bad. I've done a lot of tier lists on this channel over the years, and so these are just the tiers that I've sort of picked up and started working on. These characters are also completely randomized, so without further ado, let's get into this thing. Starting out, we have Kim Dae-un, who is like the new sensei in season five, a co-sensei of Cobra Kai, who sort of comes in to like test the discipline of the students. And to me, she's been a little one note. Like, I don't hate her, but she's mad. I'm gonna put her in mad just because, yeah, she can like push the students, but she's so one note and villainous, there's not a lot of depth to her yet. Sure, we do see her in that one little flashback in that episode in season five, but maybe they'll dive more into her character in season six. Next, we've got Stingray, who is one of the goats of this show. Character-wise, is he best of the best? No. But he is one of the goats of this show. He makes me laugh my ass off. Paul Walter Hauser is so committed to this role, you can just tell he's having a blast with it. And of course, he's got multiple moments to shine, especially at the party. And more notably, when he kicks ass in season five, kind of leading the way, because Daniel's like, I'm not gonna fight kids. And he's like, I will. And he just kicks their ass. What a badass. He has some scene-stealing moments in that season five finale. I'm gonna put Stingray in the... I'll go good. I think that's fair for him. Like, as much as I want to go great, he is absent on screen a lot of times. And I do love Stingray, don't get me wrong. Next, though, Danny Boy. You already know he's going in best of the best. He's the karate kid himself. He's the reason that we have Cobra Kai today, because he is the main star of the original film way back in 1984. I love Daniel LaRusso, you know, I'll have my issues with him, I can, I think he can be a little bit of a prick sometimes, no lie, especially, you know, in the earlier seasons of Cobra Kai, but he's come so far, his arc in season 5 is fantastic, and he just cares so much about these kids, Miyagi-Do, continuing the legacy of Mr. Miyagi, Danny Boy has to go in best of the best. Next though, we've got Carmen Diaz, Miguel's mom, is about to have a child with Johnny, which is very exciting, maybe that will happen at the very end of the show, we get a little time jump, who's to say? I like Carmen a lot, I would actually put her in the good tier, probably like right behind Steve, Stingray right here, like Stingray I prefer over Carmen, but Carmen's a good character, you know, it's funny when her and Johnny have those like dream sequences to cold open the episodes, and she cares so much about Miguel, they're, they're, they're a great like mother-son dynamic. Moving on though, we have Aisha, who is really only in seasons one and two, and then makes a surprise appearance later in season four. I've always liked Aisha, I thought she had, you know, some fun moments, but again, she's probably just gonna go in good. I'd put her behind these two, I think I like Stingray and Carmen more, but hey, Aisha has her moments to shine for sure, and I loved the way that she gave Sam some motivation in season four. It was really a wonderful little scene, a little callback almost. Moving on though, we've got Terry Silver. You guys already know. Terry Silver is the undisputed best villain, not only in Cobra Kai, but in the entire Karate Kid franchise. He's going in best of the best right behind Danny Boy. So I do think that I prefer Daniel over Silver just by a hair. Also, I mean, the crane kick in season five kind of solidifies who's better. <laughs> Both are in best of the best. They're some of the best characters in the show without question. Moving on, we've got Anthony. <laughs> You guys know how I feel about Anthony. If this, you know, if I was making this tier list after the early seasons before season five, he would be in bad without a shadow of a doubt. But I'm gonna be honest with you, I will put Anthony in meh. And I think I'll put him above Kim Dae-un right now, just because he really did have a quick little turnaround in season five, gives them the advice to work as a team to protect the egg during shows in his little training session. And more importantly, he's the one that gets the video on the Cobra Kai YouTube channel. He like protects it so that Silver can get exposed. So he's come so far. He's tried to make amends with Kenny. He's doing his best. He's really turned around. I have to give credit where credit's due. I'm putting him in mad because I just think that he's absent for a lot of the season and has like no role, but he's not a bad character. Now, granted, there will be at least one or two characters that make the bad tier, so stay tuned for that. But Anthony LaRusso, I have to show respect where respect is due, and he deserves it right now. Moving on, we've got Moon. She's like the stereotypical hipster girl. She's got a lot of funny bits, though. Uh, she dated Hawk, and then she dated Piper, and then she has that motivational moment in the season four All Valley when she gives Hawk the kiss and kind of gives him the mojo he needs to get back in action. I would put Moon in the good tier. I would I would put her like behind Aisha. Like I think Aisha maybe does a little more in the early seasons. Moving on, though, we've got Bobby, who 
who is like Johnny's old buddy from Cobra Kai, who is now a pastor. I would say he's a mad character. He's not bad, but again, he's barely in it. I'd put him like behind these. Like I prefer both of these characters over Bobby just because he's barely in it. It's cool to see this OG Cobra Kai member around, but he has a nice little heart to heart with Johnny. Other than that, he's kind of mad. Next, we have Amanda LaRusso, who honestly, I think this is our first great of the video. I'm gonna put her in great just because I think Amanda LaRusso does a lot in the show. She has that moment where she has the confrontation with Crease, though she is a little bit irritating in like season one in particular, blindly defending her kids. She is caught up in all of this mess and through thick and thin, she stays by Daniel's side. You know, we see that moment where she goes back to her home in Ohio in early season five and she talks to Jessica. She's very supportive of Daniel and her family. I think she deserves a spot in great. Next, we've got Chosen, who like early on in Cobra Kai, he's not even in it. He shows up in season three and then he has a massive role in season five where he kicks so much ass. I thought honestly he was the most powerful out of anyone at one point in this show. He gets into a Kill Bill-esque sword fight with Silver near the end. It's incredible stuff. I mean, Chosen is hilarious. He drops wisdom bombs left and right, seeing him get drunk at the club and like letting out his side where he shows his love for Kamiko and like his passion for that. He is going in great. I, I, I put him right here. I don't think he's the best of the best simply because he's in what? One season and then a few episodes in season three. And then of course at the very end of season four, but I just, I can't go best of the best, but I still think that he is a great character and such a fun addition to season five. Really expanding Miyagi-Do, their training. One of the characters that like gives us more lore on the history of Miyagi-Do, karate, all that stuff. Next, we've got Dimitri, one half of the Binary Bros. <laughs> um, I'm gonna put Dimitri in great. I actually will go right above Amanda LaRusso. Dimitri's always got the funny lines in every season. He shows up at the perfect time. You know, one of my favorite bits with him is when he shows up to Johnny's apartment and he, <laughs> he has to like give him a new phone. It was hilarious. That's stuff like that I just love with him. I'll never forget, I think it's season two, episode 10, when he kicks Hawk's ass, he like kicks him into the trophy case. What an amazing moment. Moving on, we've got the other half of the Binary Brothers, Hawk, aka Eli Moskowitz, who has quite possibly one of the best redemption arcs, not only in Cobra Kai, I mean, I think he has the best redemption arc in Cobra Kai probably, but in like TV shows that I've seen, it's truly well written because at first he's this kid who has no confidence and then he finds confidence through karate through Cobra Kai, Johnny's Cobra Kai though, and then he sticks around in Cobra Kai when Kreese takes over and he becomes corrupted, he becomes brainwashed by that system that they're promoting at Cobra Kai. And ultimately he has this turnaround in the season three finale where he ends up kicking ass side by side with Dimitri. He comes full circle. They make him one of the most hateable characters in the show. And then you learn to love him. He's still learning in season four, but by season five, it's so easy to root for Hawk. And uh, I really do love this character. I would put Hawk in great. I would put him above Chosen actually. Like I would put him like right here at the top of great because he's a damn great character. That being said, my hatred for him in the earlier seasons, it kind of holds me back from putting him in best of the best. Moving on though, we have Yasmin who I hated in the early seasons. I think we all did. She kind of turned around around a little bit, has a little romance going with Dimitri in the later seasons. I think Yasmin, you know, she's mad to me. Like, I put Moon in good, because I think Moon actually provides a spark to the show. She's fine. I'll put her in mad. I, I'll put her, like, I, I put her, like, right here. Like, I think that Kim Dae-un is a better character, and I think Anthony actually is a better character now. Moving on, though, we've got Kenny, who's introduced in season four, and it was so random, honestly jarring to see him introduced, because I was like, who the hell is this random kid? Are we really gonna introduce a storyline with him? And then he ends up having a surprisingly great little arc as Anthony LaRusso is his bully. He starts to bully Anthony LaRusso. Kenny's like the full-on face of the Cobra Kai students by the time we get near the end of season five, so we don't know where this character is going. Cobra Kai seemingly shut down at the end of season five. I would put Kenny in the good tier. I would put him, like, actually behind Stingray. The reason being is he was a good kid at first. I was like, oh, this is a sweet story. And then they just turned him into a villain so quick. I was like, damn. I always thought he was a little overpowered too, not gonna lie. Like he got his ass handed to him in All Valley at the end of season four. And then he comes out and is destroying Hawk. He kicks Robbie's ass. I don't hate Kenny by any means. He's a good character, I think objectively, but I wish that he was great. Next, we've got Devin Lee, a fan favorite. I know a lot of you guys who watch the reaction series love Devin Lee. I like Devin Lee a lot too. She's barely in the show thus far. I think she has her most prominent role, you know, in the All Valley in season four. But she has a decently sized role in season five as well. Devin Lee to me is a character who the future holds a lot for her. There's so much untapped potential for Devin Lee. She has so much to explore still and I'm excited to see her more in season six. Hopefully she has a big role. I'm gonna put Devin Lee in the good tier. I don't think she's great yet. You know, she has some great moments, but I would put Devin Lee like right here because I just love Stingray. I'd put her right behind Stingray. So 
Uh, she's above Kenny for sure for me. Devin Lee has moments to shine. She had that little redemption where, you know, in season five, it seemed like she was going to turn to the dark side for a bit. She was getting brainwashed, but her and Tori teamed up uh, near the end, and I thought that was a really sweet moment, kind of a full circle moment for their relationship. Moving on, we've got Tommy, who, you know, one of the OG Cobra Kai's. It was sweet to see him back, and I didn't know this the first time I watched the episode where the character passes away, but it's actually paying respects to the actor who passed away in real life, and I actually had no clue the actor passed away when I watched the episode, so it's really tragic, rest in peace. But looking back, it's sweet that he got to have that final moment in the Cobra Kai and Karate Kid fandom. I would put this character actually above Bobby right here, just because, again, he's barely in it, but Tommy has a very sweet moment and send-off in this universe. Next, we've got Shannon Keen, mother of Robbie Keen, and obviously she is now separated from Johnny. This is another character I gotta go meh. I think I like Shannon more than... I think I put Shannon, like, right here. Like, Yasmin has a little more to do. Shannon shows up every now and then. She's kind of a terrible mother at first, and then she gets the help that she needs, and we see her have a sweet little moment with Johnny where she walks up into his apartment. She's like, you knocked up Carmen, didn't you? One of those side characters, not a lot to do. Then we've got Jimmy, the other friend who doesn't really do much. Honestly, in the bad tier. I'm sorry. Someone had to go in bad. Of like the OG Cobra Kai group from the 1984 movie, I feel like he's one of the least memorable. So I definitely have to put him in bad. Next, we've got Johnny Lawrence. In my opinion, this is the best character in Cobra Kai. I'm going to put him at the top of best of the best, above Danny Boy, above Terry Silver. Johnny's just that guy. From day one, I feel like he has come the furthest from, you know, the original Karate Kid, and this feels like his show. Like, sure, Daniel's the Karate Kid, but to me, Johnny is what Cobra Kai is all about. You know, the first season's about him opening Cobra Kai again, and then we see him get a second chance at fatherhood with Miguel, and then we see him sort of make amends with Robbie, his real son. We see him fight his old demons with Kreese. Adding on to that, we got his relationship with Daniel. So there's so much depth to Johnny, because before this, he was just in the Karate Kid movie, and he was the villain of that movie, and he was written off. We get to see, like, the Karate Kid events through his lens, and they did a masterful job at that. I mean, there are moments here where we see William Zabka break down. His acting elite. He's a badass, you know, he's hilarious. He's still learning a lot, but he has to go in best of the best just because he is that guy. Next, we've got Vanessa, who's actually, I believe, the cousin of Louis. And I didn't realize that this was Ralph Macchio's real life daughter, so that's pretty cool. I'm gonna put her in bad though. Like, no disrespect, of course, but she doesn't really do much. She's in what, two episodes? It's funny when she's with Anoush at the club in the season five penultimate episode. That was funny, but she's not very memorable. Moving on, we've got Allie. What a great way to bring her in. You know, they set it up at the end of season two and she actually shows up in season three near the end and it was really great to see because this is the OG Karate Kid love interest right here. Allie, you know, and Daniel had their thing but also there was a love triangle in that original Karate Kid movie and we see hints of that in season three when Allie comes back. But what I love about Allie is they didn't just bring her back for no reason. They brought her back to sort of settle the differences between Daniel and Johnny. Have them both not dwell on the past and look forward to the future. It was an eye-opening experience for Johnny as he realized that he truly loves Carmen. Honestly, I'm gonna put Allie like right here. I feel like it'd be disrespectful to put her above these characters because they have way more screen time. If it was like a Karate Kid movie ranking, she might be higher, but I think Carmen, Kenny, Devin Lee, and Stingray are better characters than Allie, even though Allie has a great role. Next, we've got Anoush, who's kind of a comedic relief side character. I'll put Anoush in the mats here. I I'd probably put Anoush above Anthony, though, because I think Anoush has some funny moments for sure. Uh, Anthony, kind of a punk, really, for most of the show. Anoush has funny moments, what can you say? Moving on to Piper, this is a character who's not in it much. She dated moon for a while. I'll put Piper like right here probably. I like her a decent amount. Next we've got Bert, one of the most slept on supporting characters in this show. Bert always just having those funny moments. It's hilarious when he's in the tournament and they're all like, Bert, Bert, Bert. Put Bert in the good tier. I feel like it'd be disrespectful not to. I'll put Bert like back here, like at the back of good. He definitely earns a spot in good just because he's a funny dude. Seeing his relationship with Stingray is definitely the highlight of Bert. Moving on, we've got Miguel, arguably my favorite character in the show, right alongside Johnny. I'm actually going to put Miguel above both of these characters. Again, Daniel, the OG, the Karate Kid, gotta respect it. Silver, the best villain. But Miguel, another character just like Johnny who has so much growth from episode one. Looking back, he's actually grown up so much as well. It's kind of wild to look back at season one and see how young he really was. Started out as like someone who didn't know how to fight, was trying to learn how to defend themselves. It was basically a parallel of Daniel in the beginning of the first Karate Kid. He goes on to win the All Valley, and then he obviously has the horrific incident at the end of season two where he gets injured, and he just grows so much as a character. His relationship with Sam is my favorite relationship in the show, romantically speaking, just pulls on the heartstrings every time. He goes on the quest to find his father and he realizes, damn, my mom was right. And there's just so much to love about him. He's basically a son at this point to Johnny. I just love this character. Moving on, we've got Kreese, two massive characters in a row. You guys already know Kreese is going in best of the best. I'm putting him like right behind Silver because I do think Silver surpassed him as a villain at the end of season four. 
Kreese, though, a menace from the beginning, manipulative. They add so much depth to him through flashbacks, again, with both of these characters, but particularly Kreese at the end of season three. That is an insane flashback. When we see him get in that fight in Vietnam, like over the pit of snakes, that was insane. He has a tragic backstory. They really let us understand why he is the way that he is today. And now he's a free man. He broke out of prison at the end of uh, season five. So what's in store for him? Who's to say? But we'll have to wait and find out. Next, we've got Chris. I've always found Chris to be like one of the most underrated characters in Cobra Kai. And by the way, it's weird to say Chris out loud because my name is Chris, but that's just a weird phenomenon. Honestly, I'm going to put Chris in good and I'm going to put Chris sort of high in good. I would put him probably right here like right in the middle of good. I've always liked him. He has some pretty funny moments when he fights Mitch in the school fight in season two. He's a Miyagi-Do guy. You gotta love it. Next, we've got Sean, who is barely in this show. He's Kenny's older brother, as we would come to find out. He's kind of a jerk to Robbie and Juvie for a while, but he kind of comes around. I'd put him in mad. I'd put him in like the back of mad, maybe, just because again, he does the least out of probably everyone in this mad tier, but he's not a bad character. Next, we have Kumiko, who we first see in the Karate Kid part two. She came back. It was a wonderful moment, like one of the most emotional moments in the entire show in the season three mid-season finale when she gives Daniel that letter and he's reading Miyagi's letter. It's, he breaks down. I honestly got teared up watching it. It was beautiful. I'll put Kamiko like right here. Like I think I like Ali's role a little bit more than Kamiko, but both of them are very good callbacks. You know, we have Daniel's love interest from the first film and Daniel's love interest from the second film, both sort of having inspirational roles. And I hope Kamiko ends up with Chosen at the end of season six. That's a must at this point. They set it up at the end of five. They got to follow through. Next, we got Robbie Keane, a character who has has fantastic development. He's a bad boy in the first season. He's Johnny's son. And then he ends up having a little turnaround, fights with Miyagi-Do for Daniel and ends up fighting Miguel in the finals. He really turns around in season two, but then he gets in the fight and is responsible for Miguel's injury. He goes on the run. He joins Cobra Kai. He's brainwashed. He's evil. Then he finally turns around and it is beautiful to see. Robbie has one of the better arcs. Really sweet seeing him and Johnny make up for last time as father's son at the beginning of season five. I'm going best of the best with Robbie. It's tough now that I think about it. Do I like Robbie or Miguel more. I've never made the definitive decision. Hmm. I think I got to stick with my gut though and put Miguel above Robbie. Just because early on, I've always loved Miguel. Robbie, it took a little longer for me to warm up to, but they're both, these are all best of the best characters and there's no denying it. When Robbie and Miguel fight, it's fantastic stuff. They fight it out and they're finally buddies. That warmed my heart more than almost anything in the show. Next, we got Louie, the goofy cousin of Daniel. He's going in mad. I'll put him above Anoush just because I think that he's got a little more to do. He's just comically dumb. Like he does some stupid stuff, makes constantly dumb decisions, but he's a mad character. Then we have Lucille, Daniel's mother, who doesn't do much in this show. It's funny to see Amanda react to Lucille. I don't know. I put her like at the back of good, honestly. Like she, I like her way more in the Karate Kid movie. She's a little bit irritating in this, but she has a few sweet moments where she, you know, gives that motherly advice to Daniel. Then we have Lyle. I'm going to put Lyle in bad. I'll put him like here just because I like him more than these two characters. Lyle's like the dude who works at the pawn shop. He's in a few episodes here and there. Is kind of a jerk. Then we've got Kyler. <laughs> Arguably my least favorite character in the entirety of Cobra Kai. He's so easy to hate. He has one of the most punchable faces I've ever seen. I don't think Kyler's a bad character. That's the thing. Because he is so easy to hate and you love to hate him, I think he's actually a good character because he is the bully from day one. He honestly doesn't change much. He, like Hawk even says in season five, like he just plays the bully shtick over and over and doesn't change. I would put Kyler like right here. Like, I like Chris more than Kyler, but I do think Kyler is a good character, despite the fact that he has such a punchable face and it's so easy to cheer for him to get his ass beat. Next, we got Mike Barnes, the bad boy of karate himself. What a great role he played in season five, being a little like mellowed out in the early on the season. And then in the finale, he's like hooked up, he's kicking ass, he drives the limo, and he goes and wants to fight Silver. He's got a great, great role. I honestly think that Mike Barnes, even with a limited screen time he has, I truly think that he is a good character and I'm damn near tempted to put him in the great team. And by the way, while we're here, I'm moving Stingray to great, and I'm gonna put Stingray like right here. I don't know what I was thinking. Stingray is a great character. Let's let's be real here. Let's cut the crap. Stingray has some great moments, and he actually has a great arc when he is doing the D and D game in the final season, talking about how he just wants to be a warrior and have friends. So I think Stingray deserves a spot in great. But as far as Mike Barnes, I can't put him above a lot of these people who've. You know what? I don't even care. Mike Barnes is going in great. <laughs> He's a scene stealer in season five. And even with the limited screen time he had in the season, they really filled in the gaps from part three to now well. And we barely even saw him in the season. He is a great character, I think. Next, we've got Sam LaRusso. I love Sam. I always have. Let me know what you guys think of Sam LaRusso down below because I've seen some mixed things on Sam. Her relationship with Miguel is sweet. Obviously, there's drama between, you know, her and Tori. Basically, throughout the entirety of this show, her and Robbie and Miguel, they all have a history together. It's very dramatic. You gotta love it. And I'll be honest, she really is 
is one of the best in the show, and I think she deserves a spot in Best of the Best. I don't take her over Johnny, over Miguel, over Robbie, over, you know, Silver, but I think that I prefer Sam over Chris. Call me crazy. I think Sam LaRusso deserves a spot in the top tier. She's come so far since the first season, but ultimately her and Miguel end up together. They're happy. Now, what's in store for season six? Who's to say? Next, we have Mitch, aka Penis Breath. This dude's a bum. He's got some funny moments, but he's honestly a bum to me. He betrayed them in the end. I can't stand that. I, I, I gotta go bad with Mitch. I can't stand this guy. I can't stand this guy. I'm putting Mitch in bad. I, I think he's a better character than these guys right here. But Mitch goes in bad. What a, what a lame character, especially for being a traitor at the end. Then we have Jessica Andrews, a character who is in one episode of the show. And I was like, oh my God, it took me a while to recognize that she was the girl from part three. She has like one moment to shine. But I mean, other than that, what does she do? I'll put her right here. Uh, she's got more to do than these characters. Okay, cool. She popped up once. She's probably got to go in bad. Then we have Rosa, Miguel's grandma, who has some hilarious one-liners. She's always adding comedy to situations. I would probably put her like at the front of Matt. Like she truly does have some hilarious hilarious moments. And while we're here, I'm kind of thinking back on this tier. We're going to move Lucille down to like right here. Like Lucille doesn't do much for me, actually. She doesn't deserve a spot in good. Next, we have Nathaniel. I feel like he's, you know, always with Bert. He gets his ass beat though by Cobra Kai at one point, which is sad to see. But Nathaniel's a mad character. I'd probably put Nathaniel like here. That seems fair. Right there for Nathaniel, that seems fair. He doesn't really do much at all. Then we have this guy named Brooks. He is a punk bully, stereotypical as hell, and Hawk literally beats the crap out of him. I don't think we ever saw the aftermath. This is a bad character, and it's a pretty bad character. Like, this guy is one note as hell. He's just there to get his ass beat. I'd put him, like, right here. Like, he, or I'd honestly, I'd put him at the back of bad. This guy is arguably the worst character in the entirety of Cobra Kai. No purpose except to be a bro and then get his ass whipped. Next, we have Tori Nichols, a character who has come so far. I felt for Tori, you know, she was in a relationship with Miguel and then Miguel went back to Sam and her home situation, everything built up and she just couldn't take it anymore. There was a whole brawl at school. She feels immense guilt for all of it. She ends up, you know, winning the tournament in season four and she's like, has a line later where she's like, winning that was one of the best moments of my life. You really feel for her. She's got a horrible home situation. She's got to work all those jobs. They've written Tori so well because she is more of a villainous character, but you can definitely see where she's coming from and understand why she does what she does. If Hawk's in great, I think Tori's in great and I think Tori is actually above Hawk as a character. I think they're both great Great. Just shy of best of the best, you know, these three, you could argue are best of the best characters, but I just wanted to reserve this for like the elite, in my opinion. These are damn close though. We're down to two. We've got Sid, who rest in peace, Ed Asner, just a true legend. Sid is a hateable character though. I mean, all he cares about is money. He doesn't care about Johnny. He has some sense of ownership over Johnny. Like Sid doesn't do much. I, I would say Sid goes like at the top of bad actually. Like again, it's just one of those one note characters who you kind of hate. And last and arguably least, we have Tom Cole, who is Daniel LaRusso's rival when it comes to selling cars in the valley. Tom Cole's a punk. He's barely in the show and all he does is evil. He's going in the bad tier and honestly pretty low. I'd put him like right here in the bad tier and while we're here, I'll move Vanessa up to like right here. That seems about right. So this is my tier list ranking of all the Cobra Kai characters. Starting at the top, we got best of the best. Johnny, Miguel, Robbie, Daniel, Terry Silver, San LaRusso, and Kreese. Then in great, we have Tori, Hawk, Shosen, Dimitri, Stingray, Amanda LaRusso, and Mike Barnes. In good, Devin Lee, Kenny, Carmen, Chris, Kyler, Ali Mills, Schwarber, <laughs> Kumiko, Aisha, Moon, and Bert. In meh, we have Rosa, Louie, Anoush, Anthony, Kim Dae-un, Yasmin, Shannon, Nathaniel, Lucille, who is Daniel. Daniel's mother, Piper, Tommy, Bobby, and Sean. And bad, we have Sid, Penis Breath, Jessica, Vanessa, Lyle, Tom Cole, Jimmy, and Brooks. So this is my tier list ranking of all the Cobra Kai characters. My thoughts on these characters could change by the time season six rolls around. So maybe I'll make an updated version of this video. But definitely let me know your favorite characters down below. Where would you place the characters in these tiers? Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you can be notified for all my future Cobra Kai videos and videos in general. And again, thank you guys so much for the support on the Cobra Kai reaction series. The season five finale is out now you guys are crushing it with the support over there. It really does mean a lot. I have a huge Cobra Kai announcement coming sometime in February. I'm doing something very, very exciting that I cannot wait to share with you guys. So make sure to stay tuned for that coming in the end of February. Cobra Kai never dies.